Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. And let us enjoy your goodness in this land of the living. May every heart and mind be brought under the authority of the Word of God. May that Word have a free course. May you bless every one of your children today. May those who are following from outside this place may also receive a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Take your seats. I am praying that this week somebody will come into this church, come to this altar and say, God has given me a miracle. I'm praying that this week somebody will come to this altar and say that when everything seemed not to be working for me god lifted up his right hand for my sake i'm praying that this week somebody will come to the altar and say that i went to the hospital the doctor said the symptoms of that disease i cannot find them any longer i don't know what has happened it beats medical science but one thing that we can say to ourselves that let every man be a liar but let jehovah be true i am praying that this week somebody will come into this temple come to this altar with a letter of employment and say that god has put laughter on my lips i'm praying that this week somebody will come to the altar and say that god has granted me a financial miracle i'm praying that this week somebody will come to the altar and say that my relative my father my mother has turned to the knowledge of jesus christ may it be that every one grass of the field will be watered may it be that we will walk according to the steps of the master of the master and may remember that because he lives we shall also live somebody say amen. amen this morning i want us to look in romans chapter 6 the verse numbered 4 and when we look there the bible talks about something he says therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life this morning under our broad theme of dealing with sin i want us to look at the subject walking in newness of life because i believe that when we come to the point where we recognize that we can deal with sin one of the results of dealing with sin is that we will walk in newness of life now in this world we have what we call positional truths and I think for some time now, we've been talking about the fact that Jesus Christ has paid the price for sin. He offered himself once as a sacrifice so that he would deal once and for all with the problem of sin. And so anyone who is in Christ, that person positionally has overcome sin. And so that means that as you sit there, if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, if you belong to God, if you belong to the commonwealth of Israel, then the Bible says that God sees you as an overcomer. That you have actually, because Christ has dealt with sin and we have been buried with him, then we have also dealt with sin. That is a positional truth. And there are many positional truths in our lives. For example, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians and chapter 5, verse 7, it says we walk by faith, not by sight. So whatever we are doing, we are doing by faith. But the same Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 6, I believe verse 12, it says amongst other things, fight the good fight of faith. So although you are walking by faith, you've got to fight. So the positional reality is different from the experienced reality. That is why, although we are dead to sin, we know, I know, you know, that 
experientially, day by day, we have to deal with sin. So when we are talking about dealing with sin, we recognize that we have received the power to deal with it. But then we also have a responsibility because grace abounds to us. Because we have received grace, we have a responsibility to use that grace to experience victory over sin. Hallelujah. And I pray that today, before we are through with this service, we will move from positional truth to experience truth. So that you realize that Christ has paid the price. And you know, in this verse, it says that we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. So it means that if we have died with him, Christ died a physical body restricted by time and space. He rose up with a glorified body that could go through doors and windows that could defy the laws of gravity. So in the same way, if we have died to sin, the new life that we are living, it should be different from the life we died to. It must not be the same. Never the same again. I'll never be the same again. From the moment I met Jesus, New life for me he gave, and I'll never be the same again. If you come to church and you don't clap, then why do you come to church? <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that, so that there is the fact that we are dead to sin but when we look in Romans a little further down to verse 13 yesterday I spoke about verse 12, verse 12. when we look at verse 13 of the same uh, book of Romans it says because we are dead to sin don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. That means that there is a yielding that must take place. The new life, if we are going to walk in newness of life, there is a yielding. There's something we must yield. When you are yielding to something, that means that we are allowing that thing to prevail. It says, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. And Paul was talking to Christians. That means that after Christ has paid the price, after he has dealt with sin, it is still possible for you to yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. That is why sometimes we behave the way we do. And I'll talk about that before we close this morning. But what is required of us is that by the grace of God, we must yield ourselves as those that are alive from the dead. And our members, when we talk about our members, we are talking about our hands, our feet, our mind, our members, the things that constitute us as instruments of righteousness. And then verse 14 of the same Romans chapter 6, it says, for sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law but you are under grace the new life if we are going to walk in newness of life we must walk under grace and when you walk under grace sin must not have dominion or rule or control over you somebody say amen Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. So this morning we are saying that one, we have died. So when we rise up, we should be different. We are saying that there is to be a yielding in our lives. And that yielding must be that for everything that we do. And I was telling the church yesterday 
there's one question we must ask ourselves. And that question is, what would Jesus do? WWJD. When you forget everything in this service, after the communion, and after you have paid your tithes, remember, WWJD. French will say, W, W, G, D. W, W, J, D. What will Jesus do? If we can answer this on a moment by moment basis, we will deal with sin. Hallelujah. If we can answer this sincerely to ourselves, and I think I've said it here before, when we were in the university, there was one book we bought, the title was In His Steps. And it was simply to say that in our lives, may my life glorify the Lord. May my life glorify him. That if my life glorifies him, then I'm living in newness of life. Somebody say amen. So verse 15 of the same Romans chapter 6. And it says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Hallelujah. So when we are in sin in the church, the church is living, you know, we are not making use of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And there are certain practical things that we must do in order to live in newness of life in first Peter chapter 2 and verse 2 the Bible tells us that like newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby it doesn't say that you are newborn babies I said but like in the same way that a newborn baby desires milk in that same way wherever you are in your Christian experience desire the pure milk of the word of God and the reason why you desire that milk of the word is that it says so that by it you may grow church we must grow when you come to church late you are not growing when you don't go for your rehearsal, you are not growing. When you insult your brother or your sister, you are not growing. It means that you are not desiring the word of God like a baby desires milk. Because if you desire the word of God like a baby desires milk, after the word of God has entered you, you will grow. Hallelujah. 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 So my prayer is that we in this church, everybody listening, will come to the point where you desire the word of God in the same way that a baby desires milk so that it will grow. We just dedicated Victoria. Victoria needs milk to grow. And so Victoria will desire milk from wherever she can get milk from. Because without the milk, she cannot grow. If the mother is feeding her, she will destroy, disturb her mother until she gets the milk. Because that is the way by which she will grow. Let us also desire the word of God in such a way that that desire for the word of God will change our lives. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. You can, you, can, you can speak the word of God. You can quote scriptures. You can, you, can, you, can, you can display your knowledge of the word of God. But the reason why we go into the word is that the world must change us. Hallelujah. There are many people in this church. Sorry to say. You've been in the church for many years. But the word has not changed you. And the call today is a call for newness of life. May there be something new in your life. May God do something new in your life. 
may God make something new out of your life. If we are going to live in newness of life, my friends, we must draw near to God. In James chapter 4, I believe verse 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Hallelujah. If we are going to live in newness of life, my friends, let's submit ourselves to God. Submit yourself to God. In other words, let God have the final word in your life and your conduct. And I said, and I say again, that we cannot resist the devil if we do not submit ourselves to God. Hallelujah. If when you come to church, a sermon is preached, and the sermon says, love your neighbor as yourself, and that is the word of God, and you cannot submit yourself to that word of God, my friend, we can come into a service, clap our hands, jump, turn around, be telling the dealing, casting out devils, but there will be no newness in your life. Hallelujah. That is why sometimes some people come into church, they are prayed for, we anoint them with oil, we anoint them with oil over and over again, we anoint their head with oil, anoint their feet, anoint their hands, drink some of the oil. But because they do not submit themselves to the to, to God, they cannot resist the devil. Hallelujah. Somebody listening to me this morning. There is no substitute for submitting yourself to God. And when we submit ourselves to God, then we can resist the devil. And when we resist the devil, he does not have any alternative but to flee from us. So this morning, I'm asking you to submit yourself to God. And then you can resist the devil. And one, one important dimension of this living in newness of life is that, no, you know, God, we cannot see God. Hallelujah. We cannot see God. God is invisible. When we submit ourselves to his word, we are submitting ourselves to him. When we also submit ourselves to each other, we are submitting ourselves to God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, verse 20, verse 21. We are talking about living in newness of life, dealing with sin, living in newness of life. We must desire the word of God. We must submit ourselves to God. We must submit ourselves to each other. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Hallelujah. If you are in this service or in this church, or watching or listening to me and you cannot submit yourself to anybody you cannot live in newness of life hallelujah he says the reason why we submit ourselves one to another is for the fear of god and if we have a situation where he asks for you you tell yourself that me, Kojo Palala, I can do everything for you. He'll come to you, Pastor, Pastor Bishop. Everything you tell me, I can do it. But if you say I should submit to Kwame Belele, as for that one, I cannot do. And Christians tell us things like that. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another. Is this part of the Bible? Hallelujah. 
Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submit yourself. We cannot live in newness of life unless we learn to submit ourselves one to another. When we submit ourselves one to another, we will be dealing with sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I always say this and try to remember this as you go on in your life. That when somebody is telling me something, the person's temperament may be different from mine. The person's vocabulary may be different from mine. But I try to listen to the substance of what the person is saying. And then try and pick something from it. A little child can teach me. A young adult can teach me. A lady can teach me. My colleague can teach me. Somebody above me can also teach me. But the principle is that we should learn to submit ourselves one to another. Out of fear for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you have Christians saying that, as for me, this person I can submit to him. But this person I cannot, then you are living an old life. You haven't died yet. Hallelujah. So when the, your leader tells you that come to church at 9.30 and you come at 10.10 because you are your own boss. Me, na me say, my boss, sorry, to wait. I said I'm coming to church. I took my body and said I'm coming to church. So why do you tell me what time I should come? You are still dead. You are not risen with Christ. May there be newness of life in this church. Somebody say amen. In Philippians chapter 2, maybe verse 3, and maybe verse 4. He says, let nothing be done out of strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem order better than them. Is this in the Bible? Is this in the Bible? Are we living by this standard? Do we esteem each other as better than ourselves? And I'm talking to everybody. So I'm not just talking to you. But I'm talking to you also. And to you also. And to you also. So if I esteem you as better than myself, you also esteem me as better than yourself, we will respect each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll be living in newness of life. There are so many things that God is doing in this church and especially since the year began but certain people many people are not benefiting from it because they are not ready to submit themselves first to God secondly to each other hallelujah it says let nothing be done out of vain glory or strife but in lowliness of mind let each other esteem each esteem other better than themselves hallelujah this is scripture. This is the Bible. Let it be that we will learn and it is mutual. The moment is done mutually, there will be respect for each other. Don't expect somebody to respect you when you don't respect the person. Hallelujah. 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 We are talking about living in newness of life and let me tell you one practical way we're all working at it nowadays you see that when we are coming to service the pastors come relatively earlier when we have a meeting and we say the meeting is at two o'clock and you come at three o'clock you are not respecting the one who came at two o'clock hallelujah hallelujah he who has an ear, let him hear. It is not your tongue speaking that brings the newness of life. Submit yourself one to another. Esteem one another as better than yourselves. Then newness of life will be coming. Then when we stand here, 
and we lift up our hands, miracles will take place. The supernatural will take place because we have prepared the altar. We have repaired the altar. So when we pour a sacrifice on it, it will ascend to heaven. But when the altar is out of order, because relationships are out of order because you don't respect me because when i am speaking you have closed your ear because when she's singing you are criticizing her you think you are better than her then there'll be no newness of life and we'll not be able to deal with sin that is why you find out that there are still issues you are dealing with in your life because you don't give respect somebody else you don't think that that person is better than you are you don't think that that person has also been bought by the precious blood of jesus christ today may there be newness of life may we be serious with the god that we are serving may the old man die may the new man resurrect may the dead attitudes may those attitudes that do not help may we give way may we yield our bodies and our members as instruments of righteousness there is sin in the church and the church must deal with it hallelujah 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 there are unholy alliances in the church and the church must deal with it Sometimes when somebody tells you the truth, and I've noticed that sometimes it's about myself. When somebody tells you something that you fight back immediately, probably that thing is true. Hallelujah. So you are fighting to defend yourself. But that way you don't learn. But no matter how the person says it, if it is true, learn from it. See that there's something good inside that person. We all want to live in newness of life. Hallelujah. And remember, WWJD. What would Jesus do? The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, I believe verse 11, it says, and it says, let's do verse 10. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of god that is why i'm underlining humility is not found full respect no when you come to church and you are wearing your stiletto shoes and your nice dress and your wonderful trouser humble yourself in the sight of god when you humble yourself in the sight of god then he will lift you up this newness of life it must be accompanied by humility in the sight. When you humble yourself in the sight of God, you can humble yourself in the sight of men. Hallelujah. 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 Humble yourself, my brother. Not in my sight. Not in the sight of the pastor sitting here. But in the sight of God. In the sight of God. Put the mirror in front of you. And tell yourself that I am a stubborn guy. Humble yourself. God, take away the spirit of stubbornness. It has died with Jesus. And let me rise up as a not stubborn person. When you come to church, your life would have changed. Because you have humbled yourself in the sight of God. But when you cannot do it in the sight of God, you cannot do it in the sight of men. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. The Bible tells us something about humility. I'm trying to wrap up on that this morning. Because we need, look, we need new people in church. We need new attitudes in church. Hallelujah. Why is it that people come to church and they go back the same way? They are not submitting to God. He says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Yeah. Is this in the Bible? First, it says, The younger submit yourselves to the elder. Full stop. Then it says, Yes, all of you be subject one to another. 
and then be clothed. That means that let humility be the dress that we are wearing. Hallelujah. And the reason is that God resists the proud, but he grants grace to the humble. It is normal for you to make mistakes in life. When you make a mistake, learn from the mistake. Accept that I didn't say it well. It will not take away the complexion of the skin. It will not make you shorter than you are. Neither will it make you taller than you are. Say, I am sorry. I didn't say it well. Humble yourself. And let relationships be restored again in this church. Humble yourself. Let friends be friends again. Humble yourself. Let brothers be brothers again. Let sisters be sisters again. Humble yourself. Let the younger respect the elders again. Because God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. May we, humility is not thinking about yourself less. But it is thinking less about yourself. In other words, if you are humble, it does not mean that you don't see yourself as a child of God, born, bought with the blood of Jesus, confident, faithful, strong. But it means that instead of focusing all the time on yourself, you focus on somebody else. How you can help that person. How you can be kind to that person. How you can be true to that person. How you can be honest to that person. Without losing yourself hallelujah 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 and there are a few things that we can just do practically i try and end up on that for us to live there are certain things we must put away to live in newness of life because we must move from the positional truth to the experienced truth that is where first peter chapter 2 and verse 1 comes in the Bible tells us in First Peter chapter 2. And so I said, wherefore, because of what I have said before, because you are born again, because you have been bought by the blood of Jesus, there are some things you must lay aside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to lay aside some things? <laughs> your yes is very weak. If, you, if your yes in church is weak, then by the time Monday comes, to be extremely weak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was coming into the service this morning, there was a song. I don't know whether you sang it or have you know sometimes you think that you know you have heard the song, but maybe I mean that God, the Holy Spirit gave you the song. Maybe somebody was singing it. <laughs> It's a song of praise. Something like, Hallelujah, eh? Hallelujah, eh? Hallelujah, eh? It's a song of victory. Ta la 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 la. Ta la 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 la. Ta ta ta. 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 Ta well, there seems to be no way. May God make a way for you. Hallelujah. You know, in this world, sometimes we desire some things, we don't necessarily get it. Me, when I come to church, I desire that pastor, Yao, who come and stand in front of the choir and conduct them. But you don't always get it. But you take what you get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But life must go on. Life must go on. Don't say because of that. So you enjoy the, uh, the music of the choir. You still enjoy it. Maybe it's not your favorite person who sang the solo. But the person who sang it is also a child of God. Somebody give a wave of ring and say yes. He says, lay aside malice. Malice is ill will, the desire to harm somebody, animosity, 
ill feeling, bitterness, hatred. And then he says, lay aside guile. Guile is cunning, craftiness, slyness, clever but dishonest behavior. We have a lot of people who are guileless. They are full of guile. Slyness. They are sly. They are sly. Clever behavior. But the aim of it, behind it, is dishonesty. Hallelujah. It says, lay it aside. When you were in the world, you were very clever. You used it for your own purpose. Now you are a Christian. Lay it aside. We have too many foxes in the church. Because foxes are sly. They are telling you to go this way. But in actual fact, they are going this way. Don't use your wisdom to cheat other people. Hallelujah. And then it says, hypocrisies. That is, things that are false. It says, false virtue postering. Postering presence. And then I like the last one. It says empty talk. Hallelujah. Empty talk. I am I'm intentionally ending the sermon on this note. Empty talk. There are too many people who are full of empty talk in the church. There are too many people who are full of false posturing. Even when they are smiling, you know this smile is not proper. When they are laughing, you know this smile, this laughter is not proper. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you know it's not true. It's not, it's not even from their mouth. It's from their lips. Hypocrisies. Hypocrisies. I like the Bible, the New James, King James. It says hypocrisy. That means there are different kinds of hypocrisy. Isaac and Gritty are happily married. Whether you like it or not, they are married. When you meet them, oh, praise the Lord. But at the back of your head, you are thinking, I wish it was me. <laughs> Hallelujah. False postering in the church. May the false postering to stop. May it stop. May it stop. May it stop. May it stop in this church. Because we must live in newness of life. Hallelujah. What Christ is empty talk. Empty talk. How many of you come to church next week? You raise up your hand. Will you come? Yes. Empty talk. You know you won't come. Hypocrisy. Empty talk. May the empty talk in the church cease. May our talk carry some weight. When I say I'll be there, may I be there. When I say I'll do it, may I do it. Let the empty talk disappear because we are new people. Somebody say amen. amen. Then envies, feeling of discontent or covetousness with regard to another's advantages, success, possessions, etc. That means there are more things. May the envies end in the church. Hallelujah. Because we are living in newness of life. May the envies stop. Too much envies. You want so, something which is not yours. If it's not yours, it's not yours. You too, your time will come. Somebody say amen. amen. I say you too, your time will come. If I were to be your club, your time will come. It will come. It will come. If it is not today, it will be tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, it will be the day afterwards. But your time will come. So the Ahonye must stop. Let's stop envying. Hallelujah. Stop wishing evil for people. Then the last one. It says evil speakings. Another version of the Bible says slander. These things, we must lay them aside. We, want, we must not clothe ourselves with them. Like some of you are clothing yourself to them. Lay them aside. Slander. False spoken statement. 
damaging to a person's reputation. Hallelujah. If you still don't understand it, look in James chapter 4 verse 11. Close over there. Evil speakings. It's in James chapter 4 verse 11. If you still have the Bible. James chapter 4. Speak not evil one of another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever you are speaking evil of somebody, take your hand, hit your mouth. Say, mouth, in the name of Jesus, I am born again. I'm living in newness of life. I'm walking WWJD. Shut up. We'll have a nicer church. We'll have a more powerful church. We'll have a holier church. We'll have a church where every day the blessing of God will locate us. May God stir up a desire to live in newness of life. Rise up on your feet. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.